Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to draw a basic T-Rex head from the side. So I'm using Photoshop and working digitally but that's not important. You can follow along with pencil and paper or whatever's easiest for you. But what you want to start with to follow along is a 3 by 2 grid. And I'm going to start about a third down from the top on the right hand side. So about here. Spend longer than me, I might not have this too accurate. And then this point here, this top left one, I'm going to budge along just a little bit from there, so let's say about here. I'm going to use that as a marker point. And I'm just going to curve a line down from there to about halfway through the square. And then from this point here, I'm going to curve this edge up. It's going to come up quite high. I'm going to meet this line about a third of the way through this square. And then obviously you don't want this bit to be too straight, so continue your curve a little bit. See what shape you like the look of. So you can play around with what you're doing throughout the tutorial to get slightly different shapes. Everyone will draw the head a little bit different. I am actually going to follow this line down a little bit. I'm even coming outside the lines again here. Maybe about a quarter of the way through this box. I'm also going to draw a faint line along here as well, which is going to become guidance for our mouth. This top left corner here, I'm going to come about one third in from the side and one third down from the top. So I'm looking roughly about here. And from here, I'm going to draw a nice curve that joins up to this point here. And I'm actually going to tweak this one, even though we've only just done it. I'm going to tweak this line a little bit because that curve is just a little bit too sharp for what I'm after. So there you go. I'll just erase that. Again, that might happen throughout. I do apologize, but it's not a perfect guide. Bring this one down as well on this side. Curve it round a bit so that it's not just suddenly straight. You want it to be a bit more natural, a little bit more organic. So from this center line on the left hand side, I'm going to draw his jaw in, or the start of his jaw, bringing it down and inwards slightly as we go and curving it towards this bottom point here. So I'm working towards the bottom line. Bring it in a little bit there. I'm actually going to dip in here a little bit. So just like that. And I'm going to curve this round. It's going to go past this line here and just a little bit into this top square. And from that line we've just made, it's going to keep curving round and it's going to join up with this line here that we made earlier. You're going to hear me say this a lot, but it doesn't have to be exact. It's only rough guidance. In fact, I might bring it a little bit further down, if anything. This one I don't mind being a little bit straighter. We can neaten the line art up afterwards. So I'm going to mark roughly halfway in the middle and we're going to bring this line that we just made up here and from here we're going to join it back up to this end point but it's not going to be a straight line instead we're going to add a little line here and then it's just going to curve under sorry I'm using very messy lines it's just the way I work and then it's going to curve back up and eventually that curve is going to meet back to that end point. Okay, so tweak it as to, you know, if you want a bigger dip or anything like that, tweak that to match what you want. So bottom right corner, about a third of the way up here, maybe even just short of that, and just past the halfway point, so about here, I'm going to start joining in a line, a curve from this point that's going to be our bottom jaw. I actually don't like how much I've gone out there, so I'm going to tuck it in a little bit. Now, we need to join these lines together, but instead of it being just flat like that, I've noticed a few different shapes when looking online. So I'm going to bring this line down a little bit here to match this bottom point. And then from here, I'm going to curve it upwards a little bit. There's not an exact shape to it. And this is going to curve again to join up with that point. So let's go back and start adding in a bit more detail from this point here. We're going to add another of this shape. I am following reference, so I couldn't tell you exactly what every feature is on this dinosaur, but I'm going to faintly draw in a line to give it a little bit of shape. And again, it's curving round, so it's matching this line below almost, but more curved. So I'm just putting in lines as I go, really, that might help us later on. But as we're into this middle square here, I'm actually going to curve this up very faintly just to use as guidance. Again to match or pass that line like so. And this is roughly where our eye is going to go. The eye is the hardest bit to place in my opinion. 
So I'm going to come back to that, but first of all, I'm going to add in a nostril. So about a quarter of the way across from the right, so about here, and maybe about a quarter of the way up, so about here. I'm going to place in this shape, almost like a comma, but backwards. So this is just his nostril. Around the nostril, I'm going to add this shape that just follows the shape of the actual nostril, just to give it a little bit of three-dimensionality to it. And roughly from the end of this line here, I'm going to move it across a little bit, but we're going to curve up and following this line here again, it's going to come in and join towards the eyebrow up here. So let me refine that a little bit. Now, the best way of actually doing this would be to, instead of having a line, we could actually replace it with scales. So I'm just drawing in individual scales. Again, I know they're very rough. Starting small, and as they go along, I'm going to increase these in size. It depends how detailed you want to go as to how many scales you want to add, or whether you want to just leave it as a line. We'll keep working on that as we go. I might even bring it in a little bit at this point, just to add in a few more scales and show where the shape is changing, because we're moving towards the eye a little bit now. And these scales would carry on going. I'm going to draw them getting larger, but I'm going to throw some smaller ones in there as well until they eventually get to this top point here. So let me draw these in. Sorry on video, I don't want to spend too long doing this and bore the life out of you guys. So it's somewhat of a rush job, I know. So for the eyeball itself, the hardest part, we can't put it off too much longer. I'm going to half this circle, this middle circle at the top. Sorry, this square even. I bet I've said that throughout. And then about a quarter of the way through the square, I'm going to draw a line. And between that intersection there, I'm going to draw a small eye. Now they do only have very small eyes, but once we've got a circle in, we're going to create a curved shape to give it an eyelid, but we're going to go diagonally through this way. So if you imagine that line, I'm just going to create a curve like so, that's tilted. If you want, you can erase lines and neaten things up as you go. And you can see how that's fit quite nicely into the circle that we drew roughly earlier here. I'm actually going to define the eyelids a little bit here. So we're just creating curved lines that are just going around the eyeball. Again, it makes it a little bit more 3D and adds in a little bit more detail. I'm going to draw a few of these going out because they seem to have quite almost wrinkly skin. So they're going to follow the lines of the eyeball that we've drawn in. But they're also going to match that faint circle we drew in earlier here. And I'm just going to keep following this out. You don't have to do too many. It's really up to you how many you do. As we get to this top point here, I'm going to sort of sharpen the end a little bit. So it's still curved, but it's starting to get to a bit more of a point. And then I'm going to start covering it again with scales. I'm actually going to follow this top line as well. I might speed this up just a little bit because I'm not doing anything interesting here. So mainly large ones, but put in some small ones as you go. Make it a little bit more interesting. Play around with it, see what you can find that works. And I'm also following the back of the eye, filling what you want to. I'm going to start sort of placing random ones here and there because I don't want to go all the way around the face. So I want them to be somewhat spaced out towards the nose. For example, I'm going to place some random ones here. This is, of course, again, optional. And I'm also going to place some around the line of the mouth. At this point, it looks a little bit like teeth but you will be able to tell the difference between the teeth. So towards the right hand side, they're fairly large. Try to make them random shaped as well. Don't make them too linear, too uniform. Throw in some different sizes in there. But as we get to the sort of middle or the left hand side, I'm going to try and make the scales a little bit smaller. Throw in some larger ones every now and again. And again on the larger ones, throw in some smaller ones. And I'm going to keep going and add in a few more on that left hand side towards the crease of the mouth. We are going to keep adding more in a bit, but let's add in some teeth. This is quite an exciting bit. So from this dip here, I'm going to move along a little bit from there towards the right, and I'm going to put in some of the largest ones here. Again, how large you want to go might vary a little bit, and you don't want the teeth to be uniform either, so you want a little bit of variety. Have some longer, some shorter. You do need to play around and see what works. And I'm going to make them quite small as we get to the end. But again, play around. Find what works for you. 
So we've still got plenty of scales that we could add, but I'm going to come to this area up here and I'm just going to add, following my reference here, that I've got loaded up, you can find loads on Google, find stuff from Jurassic Park movies and stuff. I'm just going to add in some more crease lines. Again, if you look at them, they're kind of swallowing the eye like this. So try use the eye almost as a landmark to curve around and shape around it. If you have a texture brush for scales, they might be quite good at this point. I do actually have a video where I make a scale brush and show you how to make it for digital painting at least. So I'll put a link to that on screen in the description box below if anyone wants to test that. And at this sharper point here of the jaw, I'm going to add in some larger scales on the underside. I'm following my reference for where to sort of place larger scales. You guys might not need to if you're following this tutorial, but you might not want them here, which is absolutely fine. And anyone who's drawn anything like this before probably knows just how time consuming and potentially boring putting scales in can be, which is why I'm not going to be covering the whole face. And it's why I'm trying to fade them out a little bit as I go. So we've got some areas that are built up with them and then some areas where there's practically none. I know mine are not very neat, but this is only a sketch. I'm going to put some on the tip of that jawline as well. And then some more on this top left bit here. I am doing a bit of a rush job because it's going to be quite a long video. I don't normally do how to draw videos like this, but I wanted to give it a go. So I know I already mentioned it, but I'm mainly going for these areas because they are on my reference. So anything on Google, Jurassic Park, 3D models, even the app that I mentioned in um, in last week's video, I'll put a link to that as well. That one was about drawing um, a T-Rex in like a pose and using a 3D app mannequin. It's really helpful that. But use any of those for reference if you want to change the placement or are not sure where to put them. So once you're happy with the scales, or for now at least, I'm actually going to change this line a little bit along here by giving it some almost, well, scales again probably, but almost spiky bits just from a side view, just to make the shape a little bit more interesting. The one that I'm using for reference here is actually the one from the app, as already mentioned. I don't know which T-Rex head shape would be the most realistic because there are so many online. And where we drew these scales here, that line we had, you've still got the shape of it roughly. I'm going to follow it round a little bit here and curve it. So I've got this oval shape that comes up towards the eye here. This is due to the shape of a T-Rex skull. I'm, I believe they've got a almost like a gap or a hole there, so it would be indented there. So if you were going to shade it, the shading would change here a little bit, which is why I like to mark it in here, just so that we've got it. And again, it's quite good if you want to add in some crease lines and things like that. It just gives you a little bit of guidance instead of it being completely random because without any detail on at all, it can look a little bit blank, especially because the T-Rex is so big. On this left-hand panel here, I'm gonna follow this shape again, but a little bit further down here, because again, I'll draw it darker, but this section here would be indented, so it would be shaded here. And then this bit here would be raised out again. Depending on how detailed you're going, that might not be relevant but I'm tempted to add in a little bit of basic shading. I also quite like to separate this end section here, but I don't mind having these rough guidance lines in, whereas some people want it to be much neater. But it does let us use this bottom panel here. It makes it a little bit easier, to be honest, when it comes to shading. So you can see here where the shading changes due to the shape. So what are we missing at this point? I don't think we're actually missing anything. I think we actually have the head drawn there, but it would just be a case of playing around with it until you're happy with it. I'm gonna add a little bit of neck on there though because a head on its own is a little bit blank. This is gonna come out of our guideline, so just behind that sharp point here. I'm gonna curve it up and bring it like that. This point here, this line, is gonna follow in the same direction as this one but it's gonna be a little bit wavy. It's almost like a large skin fold. And from his jawline, you could bring the neck from here, but it would probably be more accurate if we brought it in a little bit from this point, like so. Again, this line, you want it to almost sag in places where they've got excess uh, skin or whatever you wanna call it on a dinosaur. 
And following these shapes again, we're going to draw in these saggy bits, or I probably shouldn't call them that, but these neck folds. I'm going to speed this up. This bit for me is a little bit random. I don't have too much guidance on this. There is going to be more of them towards the bottom. Picture them like 3D pipes if you were going to shade them. On this top bit, I'm just going to finish it off by adding some lines like this. So these are following the contour of the body, the shape of the body. Again, the 3D dimensions of it. The one I've got for reference actually does have some scales or spikes, whatever you want to call them, coming down, but that is optional. So you could call it finished at this point and go over it, maybe on a new layer with your line art. I'm just going to duplicate this to darken it a little bit because I've been working a little bit light. And then on this second layer, I'm going to add a very quick, very basic layer of shading. So the obvious points to shade would be, first of all, where we marked earlier. So the bottom of his face. This is using quite generic lighting, of course. This is going to obviously change depending where your light source is. Neaten off any edges as you go, depending on how neat you want them, of course. There would be a little bit of shading from the overhang of this top lip as well. So I'm going to go between the teeth. The teeth would get a little bit of shading as well, but not quite as much as this lip. So you could curve around the teeth like this. I'll zoom in because it might be difficult to see. So you can almost draw a line like this where the shading would be. And there's less of an overhang as we come this way. So there isn't going to be as much shadow over there. Because this is the edge of our jaw and this is protruding from the neck, there is obviously going to be some drop shadow around here. So fill that in, spend more time than I am doing. <laughs> Find the edges with a darker line, for example, if, if you like that look. Let me remove these guidelines now. I don't think we still need them up, to be honest. All of the underside of the neck would likely be in, from the perspective that we're using at least, with a generic light in probably above. This area here that we mentioned earlier, that we marked off, if you did mark it off, this bit is going to be quite good to add in some shading to it, and it really will sort of bring the shapes alive a little bit. Add a little bit to the edge of the jaw as well. Again, this bit on the neck, this almost pipe section here, is quite a large overhang. And same for any individual bits down here, if you want to make these a little bit more 3D. You might get a little bit of shadow here, depending on which direction your light is coming from, just to separate the head again from the neck. One of the main areas where you're going to get some shading is around the eye, but especially above the eye here. I'm going to miss out this eyelid here though because of the direction it's facing, but everything sort of above that I'm going to very roughly because this video has been way too long. I'm going to start darkening things in this area. And what this does is it shows that the eye is actually set back. I'm going to actually use the under eyelid as well because of the direction that's facing. I'm going to add some here. Makes it look a little bit more detailed again following the lines that we made earlier. Get a little bit of it onto the scales as well so that you can see they are also changing direction with the eye. And anywhere else where you think the face generally seems to change shape. So yeah, it seems to be where those lines are that I marked for me. For example, this section here that we cut out earlier, I'm going to add a little bit here, which does show that the skull does dip in a little bit here. So from this point, you can obviously clean up your lines if you want, or you could go over it on a new layer. I don't mind the lines anyway. I quite like sketchy rough looks. So there you have it. Refine the shape from this point as you please. Make it your own and see what cool designs you can come up with as well. But for me, that is going to be enough because I only wanted it to be quite basic and I feel like it's gone a little bit further than it needed to already. I'm a bit worried this video is going to be really long and boring. But hopefully this helped you, gave you some tips or if you followed along, you've come out with something similar. I'm going to post this one on social media, so I'll put links on screen and in the description box below the video. Feel free to tag me if you attempt anything like this using my video, because I'd absolutely love to see that. And of course, as always, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment below. Let me know if you like this kind of video or if it's just too long and boring. I would understand that, don't worry. And make sure that you subscribe for more content. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, especially if you made it this far.